Azarenka heading the ball really deep right from the start. And that's what I think her ambition will be in this match is to not hit any short balls because that's when Panetta takes advantage. match for I wonder if you agree Azarenka has more power and if she can harness it the match could be hers and I think for her to receive with the coin toss pretty good idea well I mean you can see that if she plays just as well as this keeps the ball really deep and with penetration Flavia isn't going to be able to make any inroads Love Love. No, I think we're all just hoping that Flavia will not be too nervous and will be able to play some of her game because it's a very attractive game. She has a classic game, the way she hits the ball. Fifteen forty. I know, it, it's really quite a story, isn't it? Because she didn't play the tournament last year and had to have uh, uh, wrist surgery soon after that. And she literally spent the seven or nine months recovering from that. So she's been a late start to this year. I think everybody thought that Flavia Panetta disappeared. Then suddenly she came back and boy, has she come back with a plum. Game so that'll do it for game one. Electing to receive and then breaking the serve of Flavia Panetta. A little early harm. No question that that is really the right move for Azarenka because she is one of the best receivers in the business. I mean, she's really one of the best ground strokers that there is. I think I prefer the way she strikes the ball to Sharapova because she really gets her feet run and hits it a little bit earlier. She's improved her footwork. She's much fitter and speedier than she was earlier in the year around Paris. She'd had, uh, this is as a reckon, she'd had some problem with her foot after the beginning of the year. Then she had a knee problem at Wimbledon and that obviously took a while to recover. So she is back in full fitness. Lovely. Very close that ball on the baseline, not querying. Azarenka was number one for 51 weeks and then Serena came back. Well, she had that amazing run last year when she won the Australian and then just won every match <laughs> and for the next couple of months. She's going to dial it down a little bit. It was interesting last year because, you know, you sort of get this image and of the way the women were playing, and it was like Azarenka was too good for everybody. And then you thought, well, where's Serena been? And then as soon as Serena arrived, Serena was... <laughs> Azarenka was better than everybody except Serena. And Sharapova was, uh, went through a stage where she was the best. <laughs> 
15, 13. Wow. Everything's too long. Um, it's very hard to know which way the wind moves on this court. You can look at the flag, which I believe is probably blowing the other way, but in general, the breeze has been, I would say, as a rink is with the wind. Finds her way. Game finita. So what's a service break worth these days? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a, worth a game. And One in this game case, on. it's worth it. getting into the match because that's a scary thing when you're playing somebody who's as solid off the ground and it's a ball as hard as, as a ranker does. That is a wonderful example of Panetta how she's very nimble, how she manages to stay in the points. Her concentration throughout the points is very good. Lovely. Lovely. The sun is still a little bit of an issue up that end gone down from its highest point at around one or so and it's really bad for the server but it's still very bright a bright blue sky she's finding a way to win all these crazy points You know, one thing I have to say about Panetta is that she really plays tennis. She works the points out. She doesn't try to pass on the first point. She tries to pull her opponent off a little bit and then create an opening for, for herself. She's not one of the many players today who just hit the ball so hard, like a practice session, corner to corner. Close on the baseline again. I think Panetta showed in those points at the net, her footwork, pretty snazzy. Really? I mean, uh, against uh, Kuznetsova, she had a couple of points at the net where she was oh. diving for balls and still creating incredible shots. Fifteen, fourteen. I think she changed her mind on that one. Work to keep your self positive against somebody like Azarenka, who is so relentless out there. Thirty oh. forty. That helps. That helps you keep positive to get an error.
Ed's right vintage. Showing her early Vinny. emotions, and she's not happy. To say that I thought that if the rally went beyond about ten strokes or eight strokes, it would be Azarenka who would be the one who would be causing the damage. I think that's why she's angry. She agrees yeah. with you. Game finita. So we're just getting started in the women's single semifinal 2 1 Panetta. Can you wait? 1 2 opening set. Flavia Panetta, one of five Italians in the draw who all did unbelievably well. And we're not even talking about Schiavone. She lost early, but uh, Sara Rani didn't play all that well this tournament, and she was beaten comprehensively by Panetta. And so at least Panetta had a match on this big stadium. with the big ground strokes. 15 all. She hits the ball really nicely. I, I, she has such clear determination on what she's going to do with the ball. And I think that really helps her. She's very decisive. Oh. 30 15. The other two Italians were Camilla Giorgi, who did so well. That's Sam Sumik, who's been Vika's coach for the last couple of years, and I think really helped her. See, looking a little nervous, but who wouldn't be? The Italians work so much with the support of their team. It's early, Virginia, but it seems like Victoria Azarenka may be vulnerable today. Well, you know, it's a long way to go, as you say, it's early. But I tell you, Al, she has not been absolutely sharp all tournament. When you think how well she played against Serena in the final of Cincinnati and squeaked through that match, a tight match, beating her, she's not been played as well here. No, I can't see that there's any reason whatsoever, really, for it, except that within herself. You know, just maybe the Grand Slam pacing is different. You play a match every second day. You can play too much tennis, right? You certainly can. And you can play not enough. If you're used to playing a match every day and then suddenly you have the days off in between. It's good serve. This time she finds a way. Game you can see her in that point Two trying, to, trying to bludgeon her way through, trying to hit that little bit harder and really force Panetta into submission. The only thing is if you're too aggressive, you can make mistakes out there. Remember to check out usopen.org if it's happening here at the US Open. It's happening there at usopen.org. was asked if uh, she was feeling the pressure by being the first Italian to possibly get into the final here at the US Open. She said, well, no, not really, because Schiavone <laughs> won 
the French, Zara Rani's been in the final. She said they were all doing so well. And they really do all work as a team behind each other. Very supportive. And they've done brilliantly in the Fed Cup. They've won it 06, 09, and 10. Since I mentioned it, Azarenka seems to have it. Got dialed in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think she's she's decided she's just got to force the issue and hit harder and not give uh, the net a chance, really. I'll, I'll hit her. Love 30. You know, and the one thing with all the Italians, they're all quite interesting players and they're all quite different. <laughs> I don't know if you saw this moment that I'm talking about, but uh, Francesca Schiavone was playing Serena, and she couldn't get anything. <laughs> at, at one point, she went over and hugged the ball boy. <laughs> she needed some love. And Azarenka, again, just inside the line. Love you. Uh, no, that was not a, a happy opening round for anybody to be up against Serena. Serena, who, of course, won the tournament, so they'd open with her. And Plus the fact she plays all her matches on this court. But you can just see, you look at the draw, or you hear the draw, and the first name that comes out, and you know Serena's at the top is yours. I mean, you're like devastated. Game. Maybe this is a little bit of a breakthrough. Azarenka break serve. And we'll be serving up 3-2 three three two two in the first set. First set. Challenge the call on the right near, the ball's called out. Well, this could be mm. change of mind by three. Because I think that could have missed actually. Called out. Mariana Alves on the chair corrected it. Azarenka wants to know exactly where it bounced, and they are taking their sweet time telling her. <laughs> a little glitch in the system apparently here they'll we go get, they'll get there and oh my 15 love by the fuzz just by the flight of the ball it looked like it was just going to miss well, mariana alvis will be embarrassed by that overall <laughs> you know sometimes when the ball hits the line and then skids off it, it it's not quite, you're not quite sh secure with your call. Oh. That did not look like a fault. I think he challenged the call on the left serve. The ball is called out. And she, oh, <laughs> loses another one by a whisker. Yeah, but she got one and she lost one Azarenka by a whisker. So, I mean, that, those, how much closer could you get with either of those? So, so, that was a double then. Was that a double fault? It must have been. I'm confused. Um, well, it, yeah, it says it's three double faults. That one was 15, long. 30. It doesn't bode well for her that she's throwing a double fault. So, I mean, I would... I mean, I think uh, she can afford to serve the odd double fault in this match, but assuming that Azarenka does get through and does play Serena, she's <laughs> going to need to be more accurate in the serves. That's hard, too. 15-40. This was not the plan after the service break, but again. Well, we've had some broken rackets on this court lately in frustration. Azarenka had a classic at the French last year when she just lost a cool. 
it. So I don't think she's got that far yet. Game finisher. Disgusted. Azarenka slaps the ball into the net. Three all. Three games over. Why is it that right now in women's tennis the serve is not nearly as important as in men's tennis? It's always been the case that the, that's why so many more men's matches throughout the tournament are generally speaking long, longer matches because if a guy has a huge booming serve, it's going to be a dominant factor. I mean, the women, I think the serve has come back into the women's game. I think it disappeared. Yes, I mean, and I think when you think of uh, all the big servers in the past, the Billie Jean Kings, Margaret Courts, and all those people, well, including me, um, who depended on their serve. And then when the whole game changed with, and, uh, and Martino, of course, was very much a dominator with that left-handed serve. Well, that's an excellent serve from Panetta. But, but then, you know, when Chris Everett was such a star Did and winning like everything and she didn't have a big serve. People began to follow her game and imitate her game. And before you knew it, so many players just hit the serve. So many of the girls hit the serve just to start off with points. Oh. Well, she gets the right way. Well played. Thirty-fifteen. That's good. She's come up with uh, throughout the tournament with some very fine drop shots, as Arenka has. Neto is uh, not slow though. You can see from Azarenka's skirt, it's pretty breezy down there. at the net from Mazarenka. Here's Flavia Panetta's potential problem. She's serving under 50% at 48%, and she's only won 17% of her second serve, so that's a bad combination. Uh, you don't want to be serving poorly against Azarenka. Oh, oh that missed by a mile. Let me tell you that if there's a pressure on your second serve, it puts pressure on your first serve, too. Oh, she's not going to be happy about that miss. So on break point, New Flavia balls, Panetta please. hits the net. Azarenka to serve at 4-3 in the first set here in New York. Not, mo mo not much momentum in this match. Each player has had their moments, but it's Victoria Azarenka serving 4-3 in the first set. Well, Azarenka is dominating with her return of serve, but her own serve is letting her down. Four double faults so far. Her, but that's a clever shot from Flavia. She was running all over the show. She was doing all the work. And it was a pretty decent approach shot. But what she did so well was she didn't try to just <laughs> slam a pass. She just rolled it over and made it low and awkward. The volley. Oh, yeah, that was a long serve.
15 no. You know, we talk about serve not being as dominant a factor in women's tennis as in men's, but in both the men's and the women's, the quality of the returning has improved by just leaps and bounds over the last couple of years. And of course, I think a lot of that is uh, to do with the fact that the strings are so resilient, really. New type of strings. Boy, they were pounding it. Panetta has been resigned to fifteen just look at one of the Italians who's helped her resigned to playing really as a ranker's game, having to hit hard and then hope for a slightly defensive shot. Fifteen thirty. Her serve percentage not that terrible for Azarenka, over sixty percent, but she usually plays matches where it's very, very high her first serve percent. Thirty. Right off the line, might have just get a little bit. I would like to say that Panetta uh, actually pulled her into the net so she could cause problems for Azarenka at the net, but I think Azarenka was the one who made that decision. Look at how many break points there have been in the first set. Nine. Already five breaks of serve. Game Make that six. Unbelievable. Four games all. First set. What do you think about drop shots when you're even or behind as opposed to when you're in front? I think the drop shot is very often a desperation shot. I think it's well, uh, well uh, now face. she's had the, the courage to team. stop play and ask for the overall to make that ball out, but it was very close. And she was right. 15.
Goldie is already really just trying to drill the ball, isn't she? See, I don't think Azarenka's confidence staying throughout the point has been what it usually is. So. Time she did manage to just come up with too much pace. Did you? A year ago, Flavia Panetta was watching the US Open on television because she had just decided that her wrist was too bad to play. let you know how she's feeling. I, I mean, she must have a sore throat in the evening after a match like this. Once again, it's uh, Azarenka who decides to come into the net, and, you know, she has a good basic volley, but Flavia Panetta is making it awkward. Those balls are dropping down low. But no first serves, or not enough, from Flavia. Yes. Seventh unforced error for Panetta. But Azarenka has made 15. This hasn't actually been the tidiest game. Oh. Panetta would just love to buy a few more first serves. Advantage, Azarenka. Just looks like she's slightly hot and bothered at the moment, not being able to pace herself in the last couple of points, Panetta. And immediately one player seems like that. The other one suddenly looks that much calmer. They feel that on the other side of the net. I guess that's why they always tell you not to display too many emotions for your opponent to see. time yes. to make a drop shot well first of all it's not easy to do a forehand drop shot it's really easier to hit a backhand drop shot so that is a brilliant shot from her but what she does well is move in oh she finally got a first serve in and then launches it more. boy that drop shot on a break point unbelievable and now she's at break point again Tempting thought for Azarenka is get this break and then have a chance to serve for the set. Game, Azarenka. Azarenka will have that thought. It is 5-4, she will be four. serving for set That's number six. one in this women's single semifinal. Neither has one serve from this end as of yet. You'd think that the other end would be the harder one into the sun. <coughs> if anything, the breeze comes, swirls in this court. Coming in, I think, uh, today from over the left shoulder of <coughs> Azarenka. Fifteen months. A few more errors coming into Panetta's game. She was pretty error free to start with. Ten more from Azarenka, but I think that 
Burnett is just not seeing it quite as clearly, the opportunities to construct points against Bezarenko. As the set gets longer, the pressure grows, and when the pressure grows, people do strange things, don't they? Yeah. Well, it's it's hard to keep your concentration through the points. You know, you you get hot and bothered, and your head starts frying a bit. effects from Azarenka. And then supporters, 30. the coach, family, not as many of her teammates, but I guess they have uh, might have left already because even the doubles team, the number one doubles team of Irani and Vinci lost yesterday, and that's Sam Sumek, who's Azarenka's coach. Slice. Usually she's not fooled by the slice, but that time not getting under the ball and a clever shot from Azarenka. Azarenka is very machine-like with the, her accuracy and the depth of her shots. You know, Al. When Panetta plays well, it's because she hits some of these aggressive shots, but then she can yes, put in yes. a little bit of uh, change of pace. And the problem for her is that Azarenko is so relentless with this pace that she's not able to convert any of the shots. Way inside the baseline, and Flavia languishing a long way back. Way to win a point, isn't it? Just yes. matching the power of Lavia is, and then finally opening up and going behind Azarenka. Azarenka likes to hang out, start gradually hanging out in the left part of the court, hitting big forehands inside out. Well, that was a pretty dramatic effort from Panetta.
It's good. Well done. Advantage as an anchor. This time she stands her ground and stays firm with the wrist. She hasn't won all the points at the net, but she's won more than half of them. Set point again. <laughs> Advantage as an It's a mighty shot down the line that she comes up with and this opened the court up. She could have gone either way, really. She could see that Flavia was in the backhand corner, but even if she'd hit it really well there, I think it would have been a winner. So set point for a fourth time. Seemed like it. A lot of errors on both sides of the net. I think that by the stats here, that Panetta's won nine, had nine winners, and Azarenka only seven, and a lot more unforced errors for Azarenka that Panetta would be winning, but she's not. Another Advantage, Azarenka. Deep on the line shot from Azarenka. Can she get two together? Eight and a half minutes this game. That's Whoa. Impressive stuff. She took a power pill. Deuce. Very impressive. She jumps on this one, and she has to stay aggressive. There's no two ways about it. Back and forth we go. was willing Panetta to first reach the drop shot <laughs> and to have a miracle and reach that other one, but not to be too good for Mazarenka. Advantage, Azarenka. And that was the shot that set it up for her, that big forehand behind Panetta and nicely placed there. Set point number six. Game and first set. 
That's there you I mean. go. Six tries. She try, Six finally tries win. and finds a way. 6-4 to Azarenka. Second set, Peneta to serve. A very tight first set. Victoria Azarenka overcoming 18 unforced errors to finally win it on a sixth set point chance. Seated Flavia Panetta. She's had her moments, right, Virginia? She's had some great shots. I think she's played really well, but I, it's relentless what's coming from Azarenko's racket. I mean, she just hits the ball with blistering pace deep into the corner all the time, so you don't really get a chance to mix it up. 15 no. Panetta, if she has the slightest control in a point, she will construct a point, you know, where she really hits a deep ball up the line and then a, a shorter angle, but she doesn't get much opportunity to have the last word. She can keep the points short. I think she's got 30, a 50. better chance, but that depends on whether or not she can get a short ball. A couple of points as Rankin hit a ball that looks almost long, so it must be on the back edge of the far line. Pretty hard to compete against that. No queries from Flanetta, Flanetta that's a new name. Flavia. That was a slow kicker, but I don't know that she can really utilize that particular serve more often and get away with it. Just trying to force the first serve. That was 103. She's been at 109 miles an hour. Yes. Bad time for that. Well, you can see that Azarenka likes to start hovering around the left side of the court, the backhand side, and dominate with her forehand. Not that her backhand's shabby, but it's uh, a better concealed shot where she hits it with the forehand. She's got more options. So Flavia was trying to go down the line. Good. Not a shabby backhand at all. Great Advantage. Benete Chan to call on the right far. The ball is called out. And I'm sure there's a fear for everybody, but particularly for Panetta, that uh, she could just start being ground down here. Game Azarenka. First game, second set. Benete has two challenges remaining. Azarenka, one of the best strikers of the ball of both sides. Wonderful form on the forehand side. First serve percentage a little bit higher, and that's probably was the difference 
in the first set, the low first serve percentage from Panetta. Because as you can see, she had better numbers. More winners and less errors. But she didn't win the set. Out of pressure off as a ranker now. Just when she gets a break, she heaves up another double fault. Number six. Difficult shot, that. Fifteen. She has uh, some patches as Ringo did at the French. You know, thinking of Grand Slams and French, she hasn't done quite that well, although she did get to the semi and lost in three sets to Sharapova. So that was uh, a, a big step in the right direction on the clay. She went through a s one stage where she just was throwing in a ton of double faults. Of all the semi-finalists, she's been the longest on the court. It's one of the reasons that she's struggling a bit with her serve. Go the way the match started. Service break, service break. 15. Oh, this is not the way Panetta wants to be playing, though. She's working so hard and waiting for Azarenka to make an error. She prefers to be the one who controls her destiny. Backhand, shorter angle, and then drive it down the line. One game on. If you think about it, it's about the only way to beat these really big hitters like Azarenka. Azarenka, of course, is six foot as well, so she's five. Well, Panetta is virtually five foot eight, but it's still quite a difference in strength and power. She likes to hang around on the backhand, as I've said, so your best chance to hit a winner is to hit your own backhand down the line. Chest out. Love, love. Later on today, Serena Williams and Lee Na. Who do you like in that match? Well, I think I've seen a lot of good things happening in Lee Na's game. I think that finally her experience with Carlos Rodriguez, who she's been helped by for the last 18 months or so, 
is beginning to really impact her game and she's able to do some more interesting things on the court. But how can you possibly bet against Serena? Serena's been impeccable. How about these two level. first serves? Well, that makes such a difference, doesn't it? Psychologically, you don't have to grind out every single point. You get a cheap one here and there. Oh. Just over hitting. Yeah, quickly with Serena. Serena has just been absolutely in imperious form, hitting the ball so well. Venus had a had a good tournament though. striking from Azarenka. She gets her money's worth, that's for sure. Break point. Another one. Azarenka had uh, early day help from one of the masters of the forehand, Robert Lansdorf, and also from Nick Volatieri. Slaps herself on the leg in frustration, Panetta. Watch as the serve go away. Azarenka will serve 2-1. Women's semifinal at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Second set, Victoria Azarenka up a set and leading 2-1. This is Al Troutwig along with tennis legend Virginia Wade. What's been the difference in this match so far, do you think? Well, just the consistency and the constant barrage of great deep shots from Azarenka. She strikes the ball so well off the ground. Her serve hasn't been up to snuff. But she's made up by her returns and just by her consistency. It's a beautiful day out here and it's a very nice crowd. What better place to be sitting on a sunny day than watching a little tennis? Was able to that uh, that's Rod Lever. And he was able to take the ball a little bit on the rise and make an angle and then a drive down the line, talking to the president of the USDA, Dave Haggerty. What a nice guy he is. A little bit of a late call, but uh, correct, I'm sure. Yeah, that's when it's just settling down a little bit as well. She's feeling more comfortable. Good, just upping the pace on that previous shot. 
Yeah, the short ball. 40-15. Yeah, that one was hit very hard, and this one she can put wherever she likes. Is just constantly yeah, on the defense. And Azarenka holds serve, and that feels like that may be a huge thing. Azarenka leads three games to one. Second set. Well, it's not that Panetta doesn't have pace on her shots, but you have to consider that Azarenka is a heavyweight in this uh, encounter. Just consistent and heavy her shots are fast and her confidence growing. So Flavia Panetta up against it in more ways than one. It's funny if you read overviews of players and like they say Azarenka, her best shot is a backhand. Well, maybe it is, but I always <laughs> feel as if she dominates more with the forehand. Say, Flavia Panetta's serve is her weakest shot. Well, it has it has let her down today. Yeah. She served a, a faster serve than Azarenka, but a consistency around it. But left to percent of first serves really puts pressure on you emotionally when you're missing your first serve. Well, these are serious moments now for Flavia Panetta. Already down 3-1. Struggling to hold serve throughout the match. Now going to another second serve, which has been largely unsuccessful. Yeah, hardly winning any points in a second serve, relatively speaking. That's long. Love long. Triple break point. Yeah, and this game has started to slip away very quickly. This, these last few points. As has had plenty of break points. Eleven hasn't won to more than just a little more than half of them. But that symbolizes what's been going on. Another miss first serve. Decisive one. As Four one, one Azarenka. One. Second set and by one set alone. Flavia Panetta, 31 years old, ranked 83 in the world. She's had her moments, she's had her big shots, she's had her great plays. But she's just a little bit behind Victoria Azarenka today, the number two seed. Azarenka has jumped out to a 4 1 lead in the second set. Mistake from Azarenka, but I don't think that's really going to stop her for too long. Yeah, coming into this tournament, ranked number 83, Panetta, and that's because she missed a, a large chunk of the last year having to have wrist surgery. The last tournament she played last year was in Montreal, and then her wrist got too bad, so she didn't play the tournament this year. Last year, this year. And this performance here, her, 15, no. her ranking goes up to 31. It's a pretty decent handout 
money-wise as well, just oh, getting to the semi-final. Jensen told me this one particularly. 13, 15, if all you do is qualify for all four Grand Slams and lose in the first round, it's $100,000. The Grand Slams just are the most generous of all. And, you know, it's one of those things where players really have to pace themselves. Because if you think about it, uh, and if you win one tournament, it's certainly worth, I mean, I'm not even the Grand Slams, but it's worth getting to the semifinals of four. You have to really concentrate your efforts where you can win. 14, 15. Flavia running out of options here, and you can tell that her positive attitude is beginning to drift away from her. The shadows of the light towers are starting to uh, make their way across the court, and in a little while we'll have one of the cool phenomenons in the stadium. The shadows of the people that are standing on the top row will make their way across <laughs> the court. It's very fun. Oh, well done. Panetta keeps things alive. Yeah, the crowd keeps supporting her. She gets a slightly defensive shot and hits a... Perfect shot down the line. I have to say, Burnett is more fun to watch when she's in control of things because she really <laughs> knows how to play tennis and work the point. But she is up against it today. The power hitting from the other side of the net is just taking everything away from her. Advantage she's such a consistent hitter, and it's why she's so frustrated, because it, it just seems strange to all of a sudden see one go halfway up the net. Well, you know, I imagine that Panetta's just hitting more freely now that she's virtually out of the match and on the other side of the net. Azarenka's tightening up a tiny bit. Imagining shot from Ezarenka. I actually think Bennett has held her own actually really well in this match. I think she's been impressive. And you consider that she's 31 and this is the best Grand Slam performance she's had. Two years ago she should have been in the semis, but she just couldn't squeak out a match against Kerber. You wonder whether if she'd started playing as well as this earlier in her career, she would have really been a top player. She was in the top 10. She was the first Italian to be in the top 10, Javier Panetta. It's 
well played from Azarenka. That's something that she's really improved upon in the last year or so. Advantage, Azarenka. Looking to come in, and although she's missed some of those lower volleys, she was a bit calmer on that, and she hits it actually very well. This might be a good challenge. You think? Yeah, I think so. I actually thought this one was clearly out. Oh, you win. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, you know. As in case two challenges remain. I tell you something. Through this entire tournament, and we're in day 12, I have seen hardly any correct challenges. The nine mm -hmm. calls okay. have been really, really good, and some of the toughest <laughs> calls. games where Azarenka needs to put two points together and she's struggling to do it. That's the kind of offense that Panetta can generate. I mean, that was really one of the best points she's played the Advantage entire match. But she manages to be just inside the baseline and forcing the ball to come back a little bit shorter so it gives her an opportunity and she goes for that forehand well game it was generous of Azarenka she New smacks ball the ball away frustrated still she leads by a set and 4-2 here in the second Azarenka leads four games to two second second how many holds of serve have there been? Azarenka held her serve twice in the first set and lost it four times. Panetta held serve once and lost her serve three times in the first set. Panetta has not held serve since the third game of the first set. Unbelievable. She's got new balls this game. Is that going to help her. Sam Sumika watching that I would say don't worry about it you did it was an error in the right direction keep coming in Fifteen. Oh, wasn't that easy a shot so much younger than all the other three players. The three other players in the semifinals, all 31 years old. And of course, Panetta here, the only one who hasn't got to a final of a Grand Slam. The others all have. I think it was an afterthought. I'm not sure what that was in Italian, but it <laughs> probably wasn't very complimentary. I didn't recognize it. I know a few bad words in Italian, but not that one. But she, she knows she's 
held her own, really, in so many ways. Not getting much to show for it. There were two mistakes there. 15, 14. Now she can really come up with some good expression about that, I would think. Because she's been quick getting to every drop shot. There hasn't been a drop shot from Azarenka. That one was more like a drop lob. But there hasn't been a drop shot that she hasn't got to. And this one's the easiest one. Quite a lot of court to hit it into. And so often that's what happens. You think, oh, yippee, thank you. I've got a nice shot. Don't pay full attention. So two big mistakes into the net cost Panetta another serve opportunity and Victoria Azarenka will now serve for the match at 5-2. So we continue here wondering if somebody can hold serve. Victoria Azarenka would be doing so at a great time. It would win her the match. 6-4, 5-2. Under the beautiful sunshine in New York City. Fifteen left. One good serve. Well placed. She won a serve from this end last time. But otherwise, it's been. Azarenko's quality of returning that has really done the job for her. <laughs> Just up. Uh, should Azarenko have to play Serena like she did in the final last year and come close to beating her? She's not going to get such a good opportunity to make winning returns against Serena's serve. Serena, of course, still has a match to play against Li Na, so it's uh, not for sure as of yet. Fifty percent or first serves of hers. We may get a punishing from Serena. Triple match point now for Victoria Azarenka. 14 love. How would you explain 40, why she 50. isn't able to do that more? Well, just because of the sheer weight of shot and accuracy from Azarenka. But at least she showed us what has made this such a fantastic tournament for Panetta. Right there, she was able to do that in so many matches. Azarenka just too heavy a hitter, too good. With a consistent banging of the ball onto the baseline. As a, nobody really matches Azarenka's ground strokes. 40, 30. <laughs> Unbelievable. She's unleashed a few of those. Well, that was an all or nothing shot. But it could have been nothing and it could have been all over. Still match point.
that will do Game, it. Set, match, Azarenka. Two sets to love. Six four, six two. Six four six two. Victoria Azarenka into the women's final. Ladies and final gentlemen, Victoria Azarenka.